I'll go ahead and let uh, Ted Bestman from University of South Carolina uh, get us started. Our work at University of South Carolina has been focused largely on the thermodynamic database, developing uh, values and populating it and making it available to folks. We have Jake McMurray, MSR campaign chemistry lead and the NEMS deputy lead for structural materials and chemistry. And he's going to talk to us about uh, molten salt chemistry properties, database development, and modeling. And if, if you will, Jake, you can tell us a couple words about yourself. So I'm in the material science and technology division here at uh, Oak Ridge. And Professor Bestman was my PhD advisor. And during that time, we worked on thermodynamic modeling. Uh, we did experimental thermodynamics focused on oxides, uranium bearing oxides. Um, and um, when Ted left, I, I kind of filled his shoes here at the lab and it's, it's been a journey. And uh, it brought me here to the molten salt campaign, and I was invited to uh, participate in the in the NEMS program, and I'm very happy to, to be able to do that. My friends and colleagues, Mel Rose, uh, Marissa Monreal, and, and Tony Carlson, uh, they're going to be talking about the activities at, at their institutions, I think. I'm assuming that. Um, and I want to do the same thing. I want to talk about what we're doing here at Oak Ridge, but I also thought it would be a good idea to kind of give a a broader view as well of, of the molten salt reactor activities um, and the two things we just talked about, the molten salt reactor campaign and the NEMS program, uh, because the two are really working hand in hand uh, for um, generation of properties for molten salts, uh, database development, as Ted, as Ted pointed out, um, thermodynamic database, thermophysical property database, thermodynamic modeling, and uh, multi-physics, multi-scale modeling. Um, so in, in 1599, William Shakespeare wrote uh, his pastoral comedy, As You Like It. And so I'm a, I am a um, country bumpkin from the hills of Virginia. So I identify with, with, with all things pastoral. But from that work is one of my favorite quotes, which is, um, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. So with that, I'll introduce the cast of characters for this act one of the Molten Salt Reactor Chemistry Session. Me, uh, my colleague, Dr. Diane Sell at Oak Ridge. We're both from Oak Ridge. Uh, my good friend, David Anderson, Los Alamos National Lab. Uh, Chow Jang at Idaho and our wonderful moderator, uh, Professor Ted Bestman. And so within the molten salt reactor campaign, we're making property measurements. So we're looking at phase equilibria, vapor pressures, specific heat, um, thermal conductivity, viscosity, and density. We're also looking at, at developing uh, physical models that describe some of the phenomena that you see in the, in the box. So nucleation of bubbles and particulates, those, the size distribution, how they grow, uh, deposition, uh, leaching, erosion, and vaporization, and all those things have thermodynamic driving forces, and that's why we're looking, why we're developing thermodynamic models and a database of thermodynamics. So within within NEMS, we take those models and include other physics uh, like fission, transmutation, thermal hydraulics uh, for developing multi-physics, multi-scale tools for advanced modeling and simulation of mass accountancy of important radionuclides. Um, we're also doing computation, thermophysical properties, and you can see how the two, the two programs need to work hand in hand. Uh, computational properties need to be validated experimentally if there's nothing out there in, in, in the literature, for example. And then the uh, molten salt thermal properties database development, and I'll talk uh, more about that as we move along. So in FY20, um, NEMS as the NEMS efforts focused in this area focused on the yellow jack yellow jack corrosion suite of multi-scale modeling tools ranging from atomistic uh, computation of properties to the meso scale where we're developing phase field code that describe that describes the diffusion kinetics uh, microstructural ev evolution um, and reaction rates uh, for materials in contact with salt uh, those need inputs from thermodynamics uh, so we're developing a thermodynamic database, a Gibbs Energy Minimizer, which is important to interpret that information. Um, and those two things provide inputs to the, to the engineering scale for finite element mass transport uh, and reaction rate uh, modeling. 
And uh, this this year we worked on chromium dissolution and deposition in a molten salt loop. Next year we want to expand that to um, um, in include more physics and start to couple this with with things like thermal hydraulics, um, for example, SAM, SAM code. All right, so we have identified um, uh, systems to study, and you can see those on the left. Uh, those are based on industry input. Had a lot of conversation with our, our friends in industry. Uh, we've, we've developed a framework um, for developing matrices to generate the property data that we need. And the goals here were to define a systematic approach, uh, make the problem more tractable. There's lots of systems. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's a heavy lift. We want to be generic so that we're sensitive to our friends in industry. We want to keep compositions proprietary, for example. And then have a way to build property models based on fundamental subsystems. So in that little blue box um, in the center of the screen, those are our fundamental pseudo-binary subsystems. Uh, and, we'll, and once we have that information, we can combine those into multi-component space for uh, extrapolations into the multi-component space. And so the idea is to have a, a roadmap. So we're going to measurement roadmap. I'd like to issue as a report in FY21 to kind of guide the community um, with a path forward. And that community is funded through the MSR campaign and the means, means program at ANL, INL, PNNL, LANL. University of South Carolina has a VUP, which we're, we're very happy about. Uh, we also have this loose confederation informal uh, group, uh, the Molten Salt Thermal, Thermal Property Group, which is a, a confederation of academia, industry, and lab uh, partners that Ted and I have, have uh, co-organized. And I'd like to shout out to Raluca Scarlatta, who's leading a round robin of some um, ORNL salts that we'd like to send out to the community. And the idea here is to standardize procedures and validate techniques because we have a lot of capabilities in this community. But we, use, we generally use different techniques, different instruments. We want to be on the same page and make sure we're uh, generating reliable data. So this truly will take a community to attack the problem. And that problem is generating the property data, data for a large number of systems that you see over there on, on the left of your screen. All right, so this is what we're up to at Oak Ridge. Um, and this slide is courtesy of my dear friend, Dr. Diana Zell, who's on, on the call today. You can see the Archimedes Bob is fairly straightforward. We're, we're doing measurements uh, for density with the Archimedes Bob, but we're, we're, her and her team really shine is this variable gap uh, apparatus for thermal conductivity. So they've taken um, technology developed in the 70s, and revamped that, outfitted it with state-of-the-art, you know, they've rebuilt this rig. They've built it from scratch and uh, built this thing with state-of-the-art materials and electronics, sensors. Now we're making measurements on molten salts with it. Um, we've made them for Flynac and they look great. We made them for standard. I can't show you the Flynac, it's not clear yet. But we've uh, made them for the standards you see in the inset. Same story for the viscosity. And you're gonna hear a similar st story from Marissa I cheated and looked at her slides. She's doing this with neutrons, which is exciting. But uh, we've done a falling ball with the optical, you know, op doing optical measurements. You can't, that works for chlorides. You can't do it for fluorides. So we're using x-rays or Diane and her team's using x-rays to, uh, to uh, make these viscosity measurements so we can use more robust materials to contain the, the, the fluoride salts. And, uh, and we're, that, that is, we're exercising this as we speak. And then on the bottom right, um, calorimetry and vapor pressures is, is my, my wheelhouse, thermal analysis. You can see specific heat for Flynac in the inset, and I'll talk a little more about um, vapor pressures as we move along. Uh, this is work um, funded through the NEMS program by my friend Chow Jang at Idaho. Computation of density, viscosity, specific heat, and thermal conductivity, Flynac and Flyme compares really well to uh, measurements. This slide's from David Anderson, and David is going to give us a more detailed talk about uh, the computational properties tomorrow. Uh, but these are DFT um, calculations for actinide-containing salts. Uh, you can see sodium chloride, density, uranium. 
and a mixture thereof. And Marissa is going to talk to us about some of the experiments that you see as the symbols that appear on these plots uh, in this later on in this session. All right, so the thermodynamic database, MSTDB. So we have, so MSTDB-TC. So the TC, so MSTDB is a molten salt thermal properties database. We tag it with the TC for the thermodynamics. It stands for thermochemistry. So we're developing MSTDB in, within DOE, led here at ORNL through NEMS and the MSR campaign and the University of South Carolina through a knee up. We have a database uh, for the fluorides uh, that is further along, uh, and you can tell by the graphics in the center, the more convoluted it looks, the further along the, the database. Uh, you can see the list of elements in the text, and what you're looking at in the graphic is a blue line means you have pseudo binary in the database, a green triangle means you have pseudo ternary. Uh, for the fluorides, we're, we're, there's, or for the chlorides, there's, there's more, um, it's less develop so there's a lot of work that needs to be done in that area this is the status of the database to date to my knowledge uh, another word about some more words about the mstdb and this slide is compliments of professor Bets bestman um, the information is so values are traceable to the original sources information linked within the user database so what we're doing here is the first arrow obtained as is from published papers. We can take models from uh, that have been developed and published in the literature. Uh, we can also take data, which is the second arrow, that's been published in the literature and use those to, to develop models, refine models, and that's what we're doing. Uh, you can take values that are co from computation that are published in the literature, or we can generate those. We have those capabilities. Or we can generate our own experimental measurements, and that's what you see in the bottom right, and those are measurements that were generated at, at South Carolina using thermal analysis. So that's the approach, and it's all traceable. Uh, some more words about how this is used. These are point calculations for user-defined compositions. So it's not a database of specific salt compositions. Some specific salt compositions were used to make measurements and those go into developing the database, but these are Gibbs energy models for every phase in a system that represents the entire multi-dimensional temperature composition space. So the specific compositions are user-defined inputs. Uh, and so moving forward, um, when we generate data, we'd like to keep that generic so, so as not to encroach on compositions that are deemed proprietary. So you gotta have a Gibbs energy minimizer um, to use it. Most are commercial. FactSage is the only commercial software that will handle the modified quasi-chemical model, which is the standard for representing molten salt. FactSage is an option. We also have Thermochemica, which was developed by Marcus Pirro. Uh, that's open source. It doesn't have a user interface yet, but they're working on that. PyCalFAD is being developed by Zikui Liu at Penn State, and he's working with Marcus to implement the modified quasi-chemical model into that. That's also open source. We have continued solver development within names for the Yellow Jacket Gives Energy Minimizer and Thermochemica. So here's an example of some output using MSTDB. We're comparing these to vapor pressure measurements we made here at Oak Ridge using the net skimmer for Flynax. You see the plot on the left. You have vapor pressures versus temperature. Uh, the symbols are the data we generated experimentally. The lines are computation. And you see good agreement between the two. And what's interesting is no vapor pressures for the FlyNAC were used to develop the models that we used to make the, the to do the calculation. So that just illustrates the um, power of the CalFAD technique. Um, used other thermodynamic information to develop those models, yet we can still um, reproduce fairly well what we see um, um, in, in real life. And what we can do is what we have here is an opportunity to further refine those models. And the point being here is these, the CalFAD models, models are, uh, they give you a complete picture of the thermodynamics. So in the bottom right, you see two cubes. Um, but, but basically the outputs are chemical potentials, uh, vapor pressures, phase equilibria, specific heat reaction energies. And, uh, maybe I've left something out, but it's, it's, a, it's a complete picture of the thermodynamics. And that brings us to the thermal properties database, MSTDB. TP. All right, so we have MSTDB. 
It's broken up into two parts. The thermodynamic database, which requires a Gibbs energy minimizer to use, uh, and then the thermophysical properties database, which does not. These are empirical relations for the properties as a function of temperature. So you can see the salt, you see the properties. If we have an X, that means we have that in the database that's available for use. There's lower barrier to use this, right? It's in an Excel spreadsheet, and we would like to share that very, very soon. Uh, we're still working out the details of, for the thermodynamic database. We would really like to share that very soon as, as well. So work continues. Uh, this is what we have so far. Um, my postdoc, Jean Aja, is working on uh, cleaning this up and validating it against the, um, the, the literature, literature um, data that we have so that we can get this out the door. But there's more out there. We've found more, and we want to continue to grow this and include the systems that I showed in slide four and move this into multi-component uh, space, which can be further refined around compositions that, that are interesting to, to whomever, um, industry or, or um, for, for in, in the research community. So with that, I'm probably running close to the end of my time. I thought this was, we'll go back full circle. We'll go back to this. This is what we're doing. Property measurements, physical models, multi-physics, multi-scale tools for uh, modeling and mass account mass accountancy and molten salt reactors, computational generation of, of thermophysical properties, and database development. So with that, I'll conclude and, and take any, any questions that, that you may have. We have one question from Mark, uh, I think it's Croce, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Atlanta. Uh, how do you prioritize salt compositions to evaluate? So the specific compositions, uh, are they're not, so the systems of interest um, are, you know, they're based on the input we get from uh, conversations we have with, with, with our friends in industry. Specific compositions, if you were willing to share those, uh, we're happy to take those and, and use those. But um, the idea for the database development is, is, to, is to run the entire compositional space. So, a specific composition for the database development is not necessarily all that important. It's, you know, how, how, what's the behavior over the compositional composition and, and temperature space. Uh, but we're happy to work around a specific composition if, if there is there's interest and um, folks are willing to, to share that information. From Andrew Clark, is there any ongoing work in looking at solubility modeling and social solution thermodynamics of fission products? So that's something we'd like to do, there's, but there's no active work at the moment. It's, it's, it's in our plan as, as we move forward. And uh, we know other uh, uh, folks working on uh, these systems in, under NEAPs and that sort of thing. So we're going to, yeah. you know. So with Alex Nebrowski. Steal, steal whatever they generate as well. Yeah. So uh, Nebrowski at UC, uh, oh no, she's not at UC Davis anymore. Uh, thank you, Jake. Yeah. Appreciate it.